dear students today we are going to learn about the structure of the government formation and its functions in india when the constitution of india was framed a lot of things were borrowed from different constitutions of the world one of the thing which we borrowed during that time was the structure of the government in india this system of government is borrowed from the constitution of canada now what is there the indian government structure is known as three tier system of government at the top there is union government or central government the second level is known as the state governments and the third level of government that was added very late in the constitution of india by amending the constitution is the local self government quickly revising what is there in union government state governments and the local self government in union government if you see here you can see the three tier system union government state governments and local self governments right now today our objective is to look after the local self government that is the main part of the government in today's uh, of this session but quickly we are revising what is there in union and state government also in union government what is there the union government what is there in union government the union government goes through general elections so general elections are held in india after each 5 years and in those uh, in that election the member of parliaments are been elected so general elections gives us the members of parliament so generally it is also known as lok sabha elections because it held only for the lok sabha the members of the parliament are elected only for lok sabha that you all know very well because you know the difference between lok sabha and rajya sabha rajya sabha is a permanent uh, body which is not uh, uh, all the members are not uh, been going through the election process each after 5 years but in lok sabha 5 year is the tenure that is the limit that is why it is also known as lok sabha election so through general elections the members of parliament have been elected they are commonly known as mps mp means the member of parliament now after the election of the member of parliament the whichever the political party got the highest number of vote will try to form the union government or the central government so this will form the union government and the union government will be led by the prime minister so prime minister is going to be the head of the government you member of parliament those who are in the uh, with the government with in the support of the government will be with the uh, prime minister and the political party and others who will not be the part of the government or may not be the uh, part of that particular political party will be sitting in the opposition um, uh, members as they will be the part of the opposition in the parliament now here as the member of parliament are elected they form the union government and the union government has the prime minister then the prime minister with the president will form the council of ministers then the council of minister will be formed the council of ministers there are cabinet ministers there are state ministers there are independent in charge ministers so there are also the different levels but all will be the part of the council of ministers so the council of ministers will be formed and those who are not getting any portfolio will be with the government but they will not get any portfolio they will 
just um, supporting the government and those who are in the opposition will be the part of the opposition political party they will be there in the parliament to question the functions and the working of the government so this way the union government is being formed now in union government you see that the role of the president is very important president plays a very important or significant role in the union government parliament the head of the parliament is definitely the prime minister but the entire functions is taken care or is under the supervision of the president so president has a very significant role in the central government or in the union government this is the first tier of the government that is at the top level the second tier of the government is known as the state government now what is there in state government uh, state government also formed by general elections so second tier of government is known as state government now how the state governments are formed so state governments are also formed through general election the tenure is also again 5 years so through general elections the members who are getting elected in the state for the formation of the state government they are known as member of legislative assembly so they are the member of the legislative assembly they are commonly known as mlas mla if you remember the state government has mla the union government has mp member of parliament so member of legislative assembly and mlas have been elected in general elections and out of them one of the mla will become the chief minister the one of the mla will become the chief minister and there also the these government the state government will also form uh, a cabinet ministry that is known as state cabinet ministry or state cabinet ministers there are also going to have opposition leaders opposition leader and opposition mla so this way the state governments are formed here the most important role is played by the governor governors are appointed by the president on the advice of the prime minister or the council of ministers of union government so governor is directly appointed by the president who is looking after the functioning of the state the elected member is the chief minister so chief minister is known as the head of the government in state so this way state governments are formed this is the second tier of government now there is a third tier of government which is very important the third tier of government is known as local self government remember when the constitution of india was framed and when we took the structure of the government from the constitution of canada it was only two tiers union government and state government but in 1992 in 1992 the constitution of india was amended and this local self government that is the third tier of government was added so third tier of government or local self government came into existence in 1992 and we are practicing it in the present time also now what is there in local self government so local self government has two parts the local self government functions at rural level and it functions at urban level the rural level means in the villages it functions and urban level means in the cities and towns also it functions now in rural level what is there in rural level this 
is uh, the rural local self government has again the division and that division goes as there are three divisions on the top there is jilla parishad below jilla parishad there is panchayat samiti and below panchayat samiti there is gram panchayat so gram panchayat at village level then panchayat samiti at taluka level in gujarat like for example or it is also known as block samiti because in various states of india there are various names the somewhere it is known as tehsil somewhere it is known as taluka somewhere it is known as block so panchayat samiti at block level or at taluka level and at district level there is jilla parishad now how this function gram panchayat the gram panchayat the head of the gram panchayat is known as the sarpanch so head of the gram panchayat is sarpanch the at village level elections are held and the time limit is also 5 years so at these in these elections the sarpanch or the gram sabha is elected and the head of the gram sabha becomes the sarpanch so they functions at in that particular village then four or five or the all the gram panchayats of that particular taluka or block will form a panchayat samiti and in panchayat samiti the head of the uh, functioning pan, uh, samiti is known as block development officer or bdo so block development officer take care of the panchayat samiti panchayat samiti how is formed panchayat samiti is formed by the combination of various gram panchayats of that particular taluka they form panchayat samiti and the panchayat samiti or the taluka samiti of the entire district will form the jilla parishad the jilla parishad will have a chairman and this way this entire system functions so gram panchayat at the village level then few villages and the gram panchayat form the panchayat samiti and all the panchayat samiti of the entire district will form a jilla parishad the head of the jilla parishad is going to be a chairman who is again elected from the panchayat samitis okay so this way in rural areas this is uh, this way they function jilla parishad comes under the state government so all the funds are been released by the state government the funds comes to the jilla parishad then it goes to the panchayat samiti and then it goes to the gram panchayat so this way in villages it functions what is there in urban so in urban areas there are two level it is known as municipalities municipalities and second one is known as municipal corporation municipalities and municipal corporation now municipalities and municipal corporation how it is it is it has been divided in urban areas means in towns and cities there are municipalities and municipal corporation for example if you see rajkot so rajkot has rmc rmc stands for rajkot municipal corporation same way if you see amdavad we have amc that is amdavad municipal corporation so there are cities where municipal corporations are there there are towns where municipalities are functioning now what how it has been divided the municipal corporations and municipalities are formed on the basis of the number of people living in that particular city for example if the population of a city or a town is from 1 lakh from 1 lakh to 10 lakh if the population of a town or a city is 1 lakh to 10 lakh it will have a municipality if the population is more than 
more than 10 lakh then it will have a municipal corporation the municipal corporation and municipalities are also directly functioning under the state government now in municipal corporations uh, sorry in municipalities there will be a chairman who is going to be elected from the jilla parishads which are formed in that particular district so jilla parishad the one of the member will become the part of the uh, municipal municipality as a chairman in municipal corporations the cities whose population is more than 10 lakh there the municipal corporations are functioning now municipal corporations has two heads one of the head of the municipal corporation who is directly appointed by the state government with the help of the governor of the particular state that um, uh, person who is being appointed by the state government to look after the municipal corporation is known as municipal uh, co sorry, corpor um, uh, municip municipal commissioner. So municipal commissioner is in the municipal corporation that is directly appointed by the state government. The second person who is also the head of the municipal corporation who is elected by the people of the wards. Each and every area of a city is divided into wards and each and each and every ward will have one ward member. So those ward members are elected from the city and the ward members, one of the member of the ward member who is been elected by the people will become the mayor. So mayor is an elected member and municipal commissioner is an appointed person from the state government. So this way in urban areas, if the population is up to 10 lakh, they will be having, they will have municipalities. And if the population is more than 10 lakh, then they, they will have a municipal corporation. So this way, this local self-government is working. Now you can see that uh, union government, then state government, and then below state government, there is local self-government. The local self-government has two parts, the rural and the urban. The rural has Jilla Parishad, then Panchayat Samiti, and then Gram Panchayat. In urban, there are two. Uh, 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 two level. The first one is municipalities where the cities and towns whose population is less than 10 lakh but more than 1 lakh is, will have the municipalities whereas the population is more than 10 lakh will have a municipal corporation. Fine. So this is all about the three tiers of the government. Union, state and local self-government. Thank you.